facts about being a graphic designer and I just want to let you know that those facts are based on my personal experience and if you are a graphic designer then obviously you have your own experience and then probably you have your own facts about being a graphic designer so if you do have your own facts then please leave them in the comments below after watching this video if you find at least one fact that will help you and that will inspire you to become a better designer then i'll be very happy so let's just go ahead and get started if you are a graphic designer especially if you are a freelance graphic designer, then I feel sorry for you. I do, because just think about that. Teachers, they all have jobs. Lawyers, all are fully employed. Doctors, all have jobs. Accountants, everybody's working. And where does that leave us, designers? Are you jealous of those, say, accountants? Well, I don't think so, because I think they had a choice. Maybe they were passionate about accounting, but I think it's more likely that they used their reason, logic and common sense to reach for a career that could give them a stability and success. But uh, you didn't have that choice, did you? You discovered your talent, you developed your ambition and you recognize your passion and when you feel that you can't fight it you just go with it and that is why i feel sorry for you because i know exactly what you feel i know and understand it because i'm a designer myself but the good news is that we all have a clear path not easy but clear and all we have to do is just to keep working keep practicing every day and keep learning and also from my experience just follow your intuition and i just want to say that your intuition is different from your conscience because they work in tandem but here's the difference your conscience shouts here's what you should do whereas your intuition whispers here's what you could do so listen to that voice that tells you what you could do because nothing can define your character more than that the actual making the day-to-day -day working process has always been my favorite part and i love creating let's say logo designs more than i like looking at them i do because i love just having this idea on paper and then let it go and see what it can become and it's also very important just to be able to stop at certain point. When you're done with your project, let's say you're done with your logo design, then that's it, that's enough. Just there's nothing you can do about it. You may never even hear about this logo again and your client's business may never even succeed. So all you can do about it is just to have this experience, go and have this experience this day-to-day -day architecture of creating design, creating logos. Do not think that a great idea is a 90% of success, because it's not. You know, the problem is that there is a great amount of craftsmanship between this great idea and the great design. Throughout the process, this great idea, it always changes, it grows, it develops, it never comes out like it starts. We learn so much new things. And then just suddenly we learn that there are certain things that do not look good or there are certain things that you cannot make functional. And just every day you learn something new, new problem or new opportunity. And that is the process, that is the magic. I usually start working at 10, 11, something like that. And then I just work until 6, 7 p.m. And then when I'm done working, I go to the kitchen and start cooking dinner for me and my boyfriend. And then when I start cooking dinner, uh, if I'm not finished with my design, let's say logo design, I start thinking, okay, how can I go further with it? How can I make it better? Is there some element I could put into? You know, just whatever. I just try to look at it critically. And then I usually come up with some good ideas. And then when I'm done cooking, I just make notes on those ideas. And that is my plan for tomorrow, for tomorrow's day. 
So, and when I'm, let's say, finished with my design, with my logo design project, then I go to the kitchen and then I start thinking like, okay, so what is next? <laughs> what am I gonna do next? What is my next design? You know, like I said, I just have some ideas, make notes, and that is my next day's work. So, and that is like a great way of creating a great way of your work routine. Besides all of those plans and goals, it's just great to have some kind of creative process in your everyday life. If you ask me, when I make my designs, do I have a client in my mind? And my answer is yes, I do, but my client is not the real client, okay? I'm the client, I'm the client who goes and pays his money for, let's say, a logo for his company. So I'm the client who knows what he wants to see. So that is like very important thing that I've learned about being a graphic designer, just being your own client in your own mind. If you are a designer, especially if you are a freelance graphic designer and you have your own vision, let's say you have your own style, then it's very important just to feel the balance in your relationships with your client because you don't want to be that person, that designer who can only hear the sound of his own voice. So you're gonna need to be able to listen to what other people have to say, listen to what your client has to say, but also just not to, when it gets tough, not to give up on your vision. Understand that some designers are better than you at some things. And that is totally okay, because you don't have to compare yourself to them. But if you do, then just use it to create a better you as a professional. Just be inspired by them, be motivated by them, and also try to look at their works and just try to create a better you as a designer, as a professional. If you want to do what you love, you have a choice. You can choose money or you can choose passion. And if you choose money, then you get a job, you make money, and if you lose your job, then you lose money, you have nothing. But if you choose your passion, then you make money. And if you lose money, you lose nothing because you're still gonna have your passion. But the challenge is that you're gonna need like at least two or three or maybe even four or six years to make an actual living on it. I am competitive only with myself, honestly. And when I start, for example, creating some new logo design project, then I go and look at all of my logos that I've done in the past. And I try to think, okay, what is it here that I could have done better? Or what worked, what didn't? And I just try to, like, to better myself as a professional and I'm just being tough on myself. So progression as a graphic designer is the most important thing for me. I think that is what good design means to me because I feel like if I'm not moving forward, I feel like I'm just losing my time. I'm not growing as a human being and as a professional and I'm not doing my work. So I feel like I always want to do something different from what I did in the past because I think it's not going to be interesting for people and for clients if they're going to predict your next move or your next design. So that is it. Those were my 10 facts about being a graphic designer and uh, if you have like I said your own facts about being a graphic designer then leave them in the comments below I would really love to read them and to learn something from them and I'm gonna see you next week